of something um, it, on the first run, I'm really much more interested in um, I'm really much more interested in being able to get it right. And then after analyzing what I've done again, I review, I check. Are there some steps which are really not necessary? Are there some steps that I could shorten? Can I make it more concise? Uh, it's because when you're moving, you're exploring it. It's like when you are in a new place, you're trying to get from uh, a house going to the market. Sometimes you're gonna turn left and then you realize, oh, I should have turned right. So next time you go through the same process again, you know that you don't have to turn left anymore. Instead, you have to turn right. But if you're doing it right from the start, you are not going to know that, you, you are not going to realize yet that you should have turned right. So it's okay. Sometimes if a, a solution at the first run ends up being longer than it, it should be, it's perfectly all right. So here, I, I see you did a partial fraction decomposition. I, I trust your algebra. All right, um, x is equal to zero. A uh, couple of comments to help make the, you know, uh, over time we, we get to pick up some habits. For for example, it or not, um, you need to solve for A and also for B. Here's how I would do it. The numerator on the left is 2x. Hmm. On the right side, the numerator is going to be a times one plus x plus b times oh one minus god. x. Oh my god! I'm so sorry, Paul. Uh, I forgot. Uh, gan gan palo po yung paggawa ng partial fractions. We multiply na po palo ba yung denominator? Ah! No, no, no. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Um, I, I see what um. Wait, tama ba if x is equal? Eh, pala po nahihirapan po ako. Nahihirapan po ako. Parang hindi ganun to po. I, I, something in my body sense na this is not the way I usually do it. All right, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. But ito, what we're trying to look for a and b. You plugged in 0 and 2, but see here, if you plug in negative 1, you're going to get negative 2 is equal to, on the right side, yeah, you have the first term a times 1 plus x. But with this choice of x, that 1 plus x becomes 0. So the only thing that's going to be left is b multiplied by 1 minus x, which is 2. And therefore, that's going to lead to b equal to negative 1. I and then if x is equal to 1, the left side is going to be 2x. The right side is going to be a times 2. And then b times 1 minus x becomes b times 0. So therefore, a is equal to 1. Thank and you. so that's how we end up with 2x over 1 minus x, 1 plus x equals a, which is 1, 1 over 1 minus x. And then b is negative 1. So we have minus 1 over 1 minus x. Bro. All right. So I are, are right there. Okay, so so first plugging in zero and two will still lead you to the same answers, but you ended up having to solve the system. It would be so much easier if the two equations involved just one of the variables. Yeah. So, uh, so the the solution you did is mathematically correct. It's mathematically correct, but you know this is only saying over time. But but um, with, with regards to tips, I would have started with the right side because. Um, it is algebraically much easier to combine two fractions. That's easier than starting with one fraction and then decomposing it into partial fractions. So, so ito ginawa mo. You converted everything into sine and cosine. Pero uh, let's see. I'm gonna try the starting with the right side. Okay. One over one minus sine theta minus one over one plus sine theta. So combine one minus sine squared theta, and then that's gonna be 
1 plus sine theta minus 1 minus sine theta. That's going to give us in the numerator um, 2 sine theta. The denominator is 1 minus sine squared. So that's going to give us cosine squared theta. And then I'm going to have a look at tangent secant. I did everything the more complicated way. But it's okay, you know, um, it's uh, experiential, based on experience. So that's why it's really difficult to say with finality that you should always do one thing. Like, for example, um, whenever you say, uh, whenever you mention that technique about converting everything into sine and cosine, I try to hold back and say that in general is going to be helpful. Right, because as you can see in, in this case, you know, you, you, you got a balance. Tangent secant, it's not that complicated. But the, the right side, it's um, like two fractions. Uh, it's going to be so much easier to just start with the difference of two fractions and combine that into a singular term. Anyway, capping this off, we have twice tangent theta and then secant theta, and we're done. All right. At any rate, we had a good review about uh, partial fraction decomposition. But if you start with the right side, that would have been something that you could have skipped. All right. Now, um, you did show different solutions. However, um, let, let's have a look at uh, this first. I understand what the, you're, you're doing. I would, however, uh, I advise you to use grouping symbols, for example. Uh, th th this is really what you meant. Okay. The red factor is to be multiplied, not just to cosine theta, but rather to, but, but anyway, in your simplification, that's what you did. Uh, so wait, hold on. Wait, 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 wait. Is that what you did? Sign. Yes, yeah, so that's what I did. I, I multiplied. All right, all right. Okay. Let right. me just check one plus sign minus cosine. Then, uh, let's see, let's see s minus e squared. So one plus sign. All right. Okay. Oh, well, and good. Okay. And then one, so sine squared plus cosine squared. All right. Cancels the minus cosine squared, so you're left with just sine theta plus sine cosine. The denominator is the same. And then in the numerator, we get the factor out, uh, sine theta. And also in the denominator. And so that leads us to the correct proof of the identity. But what was uh, ingenious here was uh, figuring out uh, the red factor, one plus sine theta minus cosine theta. So um, that's a good step. Uh, that's a good step. So um, so sometimes if a, a factor like that is given, tuloy tuloy na lahat eh. Um, but let, let's say I were to prove this statement. This is how I would do it. And the reason why I moved those other pictures to the other side is because I didn't want to have a look first at what you did. Okay, so let, let me start with the left hand side. One plus sine theta plus cosine theta. Now, I don't know if what I'm going to do will succeed. I might get stuck. And you know what? It's very much all right if I get stuck. Sometimes. I don't know, uh, that's good. Me, me, so sorry, that's you will just you will just think about it, and eventually you can you can push through that gap. You malit na may malit sure po na gap eventually. Eventually you will be able to reach the answer kahit na stuck po kayo. Right, right, right. So you know what? Kung hindi ko tama solve right now, I will ju just uh, perhaps continue it later and have a look at what you've done. But for now, I want to um, do the following first. I yeah, if, if we try to convert everything in terms of sines and cosines, well, actually that's it. Wala na tayong magagawa. Eh, kasi 
this is now um, like in terms of science and cosines. So, um, medyan po na tagalan si Joshua eh, sa di ba po ito yung muna yung binigay, tapos sa nagre-rejoice po siya. So sabi niya, oh, yeah. <laughs> sabi niya, po, sa po, right. but then he found out that mas, definitely mas simpler pala yung iba kesa dito. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right. So ganito, um, with regards to sine and cosine, there is really one identity that, that uh, is going to help us. This is the fact that sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta is equal to one. So what you might decide to do is write the left-hand side as uh, as follows. Uh, retain sine theta and cosine theta and then replace one. So sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta and then plus sine theta plus cosine theta over something similar but then i don't think we would be able to do anything now i'm writing this down just so i could uh make my point because um it seems that the really the only thing i could do here is uh factors say from sine squared and sine sine theta, that's going to give me sine theta plus one. And then do something with cosine squared and cosine. Sorry, Joshua. I, I, I wanted to... Abayan po yung una ko pong attempt. Right, 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 right. Okay, so even if you don't write it there, makikita mo that, well, I, I get to make those particular factorizations, but not for the entire numerator and not for the entire denominator. So it seems like this is going to be a dead end. And then depending on uh, your on your focus, you might be able to make that conclusion even without writing it down. So when you see that it's not going to lead to anything fruitful, then you don't have to write anything down. But it doesn't mean that this Pythagorean identity isn't going to be helpful. What I am going to try to do is find a way of introducing sine squared and cosine squared. Now, I see that in the denominator, we have uh, one plus sine and then minus cosine. So I'm going to look at that as the difference of two things. One plus sine minus cosine. So that is going to suggest to me to try it out, to try it the following. One plus sine plus cosine so that in the denominator i would have the difference of two squares of course i realize that the numerator is going to be something squared so all right we have um one plus let me go back to writing down with blue ink that's our Yung technique ko po dyan kasi kung instead of thinking about them as sines and cosines, just convert the sines and cosines into x and y, so then just do the algebra. Pwede din, pwede din. I think I see you do something like that earlier. Did, did you, uh, is this what, 1 plus x, I'm not sure if this is, anyway, you started with the, with, with, with the simpler term, it seems. Uh, let, let's see, this is going to be 1 plus sine theta squared minus cosine squared theta. So, so some expansion would have to be done there. And in the numerator, um, I'm going to expand. Uh, so, so the numerator is squared, but I don't know if I would like it as something squared or sh sh should I square it now? So what I'm going to do is maybe um, to just see what I would get out of the denominator first. 1 plus uh, 2 sine theta plus sine squared theta minus cosine squared theta, where I observe that now I have 1 minus cosine squared theta, which is going to be equal to sine squared. Ah, All right. So, magkakaroon tayo ng sine squared. And that's going to lead to just two terms eventually in the denominator because uh, then the denominator is going to become this. 
Okay, so this is going to become um, sine squared theta plus two sine theta plus another sine squared, so two sine squared theta. So we could definitely factor out two sine theta from the denominator. The other factor is going to be sine theta plus one. Let me compare that to the target. Oh, okay. It's just sine theta, not yet sine. Oh, wait. Well, okay. Sine theta is there. And I have a factor of sine theta. So here's hoping two is going to cancel as well as sine theta plus one. Um, now, I see here the presence of sine theta plus one. So what I'm going to do is use that to inform how I'm going to expand the square in the numerator. Because in the numerator, you have a trinomial which you're squaring. And now if you're going to expand that trinomial, we're going to get many, many, many terms. However, I'm anticipating that that underlying expression in red, the sine theta plus one, I need that to disappear. So what I'm going to do is when I square the numerator, I'm going to keep one plus sine theta intact. Hmm. All right, so see what I did? Um, I the, 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 There's value in uh, not proceeding first and, and see what, what, what could help. So here, uh, how would I have known it would be beneficial to keep one plus sine theta intact? It's because of what I see in the denominator. So I, I have that. So, so uh, I understand. Anyway, of course, at that age, I wouldn't have thought of things like this. But to give you credit, I've had like um, more than 40 years of doing uh, stuff like this. And you are at such a young age already doing uh, quite remarkably. Okay, so two, one plus sine theta, cosine theta, plus cosine squared theta. All right. Uh, now, so we have three terms. We want sine theta plus one, underlined in red, to disappear. So here we have term number one, term number two. I have one plus sine theta intact. So for now, I am not going to try to touch those, but we definitely need one plus sine theta to appear in the third term. Ah, uh, and it does. So any suggestions? Ah, uh, because cosine squared theta is literally one minus sine theta squared theta, which can be factored. Right. Mm -hmm. All right. So this is uh, one minus sine squared theta. So now we can factor out one plus sine theta from everything in the numerator. A single one plus sine theta still left plus double cosine theta. And then from the red uh, expression, one minus sine squared theta, the other factor is going to be one plus sine theta. Uh, one minus four. Oh yeah, thank you. One minus sine theta. Okay, so the numerator provides us with one plus sine theta. And then inside the brackets, one plus one. So we have two and then sine minus sine. And then plus like two, the the cosine theta. So we can see what can be canceled. One plus sine theta. We have in the denominator, sine theta. The two can be canceled because of the twos in the bracketed expression. One plus cosine theta. And yep, it's the same. All right. Yay. Let's so see how every step was motivated. So usually, when you're it's just, you know, you, you see a solution 
but, but I, I think there's value in uh, realizing that sometimes uh, as the complexity level goes up, try to see if you can motivate each step. But, but then, of course, uh, I suppose maybe I got lucky here because uh, there are, of course, other situations where I'm just stuck. I, I don't know what to do. So sometimes if you don't know what to do, then bahala na, expand man lahat, hoping that something remarkable, something magical. Yun nga po yung pag alam, I will just punch blindly hanggang may map. Yeah, punch your way through. So, ganun talaga eh. Ganun talaga. You're really only gonna know after some time. So, your, your other solutions are... Uh, so, I, I think this is uh, the, uh, the, the same kasi... Of course, 1 plus cosine theta. Hold on. I, I think this is... Um, you, you multiplied by 1 plus sine theta minus cosine theta. This is uh, it's what you did, no? Uh, okay. Is it okay? I'm, I'm going to delete this so that we don't take up too much space because it's the same. All right. So I see what you did is um, writing things down. Actually, um, this is also a good way to go about things. Let X be uh, sine theta. Let Y be cosine theta. So you can very well do that. And the, the advantage, of course, is, you know, you, you don't have to write down sine theta and agadine, four characters. But, but Y and X makes it much faster. So that is very much a valid uh, strategy as well. Let X be this, let Y be this. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, that is perfect. That should be perfectly all right. Okay. Now, what about this? Uh, let's have a look at the uh, two other uh, solutions. Parang ginagana ginagana po yung paper. Ano yun? What? Parang po siya ang paper. Ginagana But we were we were trying to explore po. Kasi di ba po itong ginawa nyo ngayon parang it's like uh, multiplying the left hand side by the conjugate of the denominator of the mm -hmm. left hand yes, side. Yes, 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 yes. Pero yung, yung tiray po namin, Multiplying the con uh, the left hand side by the conjugate of the denominator of the left hand side. So, Sorry. Um, so there are two pages. Are you referring to the left or the right? Uh, bali po. Uh, iba lang po yung pagkaka association uh, in associative property na po ng expression po. Pero it came out the same na po. Pwede pala. Iniisip namin pa paano bang pwede you put the parenthesis. Sabi ko, let's just, just try all of them kaya para... Yeah, oh, oh j -j just try lang. Oh, just try. In I I I'm looking at the one on the right, sine theta minus 1 minus. Ah, so parang ganun din nung, ano, nung similar din nung uh so, so, so right side uh something like a conjugate Apo. and you know man, nag -tuloy -tuloy naman, uh, everything cancelled out uh j -j just fine let's see uh, yeah everything cancelled out just fine after and after bouts of algebra <laughs> all right but, but it, it, it works it works so and then if it works, it works. Awesome. All right. Okay. I just want to, to see you, uh, my, my personal process. All right. So let, let's leave that here. All right. Uh, other correct solutions. So next time you get the chance, try out these and also the others from the, six, the, the previous pages. All right. Uh, the, the, these others, maybe you have, maybe I just wasn't able to. Did, did you send them on Facebook? I well, 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 not in a hurry, so just just send it when you could. And I appreciate. I, I think it made it easier that that you labeled the thing. 
um, Josh, I'd like to remind you, I'd still like to see the your solutions to the math induction problems. They say the, those are really problems where uh, you're, you're going to write down your argument. So, madali lang mag-compute eh. Okay, it's straightforward. Uh, but, yeah. but, anyway, we're not in a hurry. I'm just reminding you. Aba. Nagawa niya na po, pero hindi pa niya natatransfer sa ano po. All right, all right. It's okay. Awesome. Okay. Um. So, what I'd like to do today is talk about other uh, properties of trigonometric functions. Kasi marami pa eh. Uh, my personal assessment as to why these identities involving trigonometric functions are, are useful, or specifically, where did they help me? They helped me a lot in calculus. They helped me a lot in calculus. Because, for example, um, if you are familiar with um, integration, let's say you, you want to integrate something like this. All right. If you look at the function, there is nothing seemingly geometric or trigonometric about that. However, we see that we have here 1 minus x squared, and this reminds us of 1 minus sine squared theta, or 1 minus cosine squared theta. And the fact that 1 minus sine squared theta is equal to cosine squared theta, an identity from trigonometry is something that could help us figure out eventually how to compute this in integral. So the context might not involve trigonometry, but the solution could benefit a lot from trigonometry. Ah, kung baga po parang binigay, binigay na po par method. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, so so uh, some of the expressions uh, can be simplified by using our experience with trigonometric functions. Oh, All right, but but that, that that's for a different day. Now, um, you're familiar. Have you encountered formulas like the cosine of x plus y, Joshua? Uh, yeah, yeah, yes, po. Parang uh, parang general addition formula. Parang cosine, sine, cosine, something. Mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm, something like that. Okay. Ano po so, so, plus so, minus po. Ano ko po? It's the first time I've encountered the minus plus the sine. But All right. Also, All right. Okay, so Joshua, our one of our goals for today is um, okay. Today, okay, we will prove the following. When so ayoko basta lang when, ibigay. When the, when the entire day is focused on proving something, that means something about the, the problem. Sorry, what's that? What's that? Pag, when, when the, almost the entire day is dedicated to just proving, uh, to just, to just proving an identity, it means the identity is extremely hard. Mm -hmm. Or important. Anyway, it's not just one identity. We're going to be proving more than one identity. All right? Apo. A sine A, sine B. So these are all related. Cosine A plus B, on the other hand, is cosine A cosine b minus sine of a sine of b and then maybe for uniformity let me start with sine of a minus and then later on sine of a plus b All right, so here are some of the things I used to uh, remind myself when I was young as a way of remembering these formulas. So the first two formulas are the cosine uh, subtraction and addition formulas. And there are going to be uh, two terms which allow us to rewrite cosine of a minus b and cosine of a plus b in terms of the sines and cosines of just a and just b. So you're, you're separating into the trigonometric functions of a and b separately. For uh, the first two, 
um, the terms involved are well, the, the, there's no mixing. So you have uh, the product of cosines and the product of sines, as opposed to the angle addition and subtraction formulas for the next two formulas for the sine function, there's mixing, intermingling, sine with cosine, and then here, sine and cosine. Now, for the formulas where the operation is addition, which is commutative, it doesn't matter which term you consider. But of course, where the operation is subtraction, we have to be careful and be sure about which term is going to come in first. All right. So also observe that for the cosine subtraction formula, cosine of A minus B, we are going to follow the opposite operation plus. For cosine A plus B, the opposite operation here minus. For sine, fortunately, it's going to be consistent. Sine of A minus B will involve a difference. Sine of A plus B, on the other hand, will involve addition. All right. So for the subtraction, uh, so for a cosine of A plus B, the second formula, because that's where you get to subtract something. So the first term is the product of the cosines minus the product of the sines. I guess the trigonometric function center stage is cosine. So the first term is going to have the, the, the cosine terms, cosine A, cosine B. All right. And then for sine A, sine of A minus B, so it's mixed. So is it sine A, cosine B, or is it sine B, cosine A? What I try to remember is that, well, this is sine in the, in, in the difference. It's A which comes first. So what we consider first is the term where sine of A is present, the so sine of A. Okay, uh, there are two other formulas for the tangent of A minus B and the tangent of A plus B. Let's talk about those after I present the justification for uh, these four formulas. I will use the definition of our trigonometric functions using the unit circle. The so proof of formula let me uh, label these as A, B, C, and B. Okay. So A's proof would require the most details. B, C, and D, not so much. So kumbaga, A would be the most difficult to prove. Okay. Suppose A is larger than B. So let me draw these angles in standard position. Yeah, I, think, I, I think the reason why the, the in the science po, it mixes. I think it's big. It has to do with the ano graph. Niya po eh. uh, 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 ultimately, everything can be related in terms of the graph, which, by the way, we are also going to look into. So, so for now, we were just talking about the algebraic properties, the visual representation, the graphs, we are going to get there. And that's important because we're also going to talk about the inverse trigonometric functions. Okay. But, you know, there's really still a lot to digest. Okay, so ito nung mga more basic. So in standard position, suppose that we have um, A here. Let's say this is um, A, let me call this uh, point A. And then B is, uh, suppose it's somewhere here. And the intersection with your unit circle is point B. So this is angle B. Okay. So A is greater than B. Now, um, what? I would like to do is 
draw on the same unit circle. So because A is larger than B, then that means A minus B is going to be positive. Let me draw here A minus B. A minus B. And let's call this point C and this point D. Okay. Let's label the points with their coordinates. A is the point on the unit circle corresponding to the angle with region measure A. Therefore, the coordinates of A are cosine of A, comma, sine of A. B, on the other hand, is the point at the end of, the, of angle B on the unit circle. So the coordinates are cosine of small b, sine of small b. Now, as for our green points, D is, of course, 1, 0. We are on the unit circle after all. C, on the other hand, will have the following coordinates, keeping in mind that C is on the terminal ray of the angle A minus B. Cosine of A minus B, comma, sine of A minus B. Look at the coordinates. The coordinates involve the trigonometric functions of A, B, and A minus B. All right. Now, um, Joshua, he here's my question. I'm going to connect AB and also CD. What can um, you say about them? Oh, AB and CD. Well, maybe this is what I was saying for about the, is the chord function of a certain angle. Mm -hmm. What should... What can we conclude hey, about it, those blue segments? Because, because, diba po, diba, diba po, since sabi ko nga po, if there, if I remember, there's a chord function. So, since those are after, technically the same angles, CRDA minus B should also be equal to CRDA minus B by reflexing. Therefore, it's the same, it must be the same length. So, the, the, they must be the same length. So, okay. AB and CD are segments having the same length. Uh, actually, you can oh, think about they're it. congruent. And, and, yeah, they're, they're congruent. All right, because they're both isosceles triangles. Uh, but because of the radii, uh, from the origin to B to A to C and to D, and then the vertex angle, both A minus B. Sleep. So observe that, um, since triangle, so if this is O. O, A, B is congruent to triangle O, C, D. Then A, B equals C, D. All right, so the lengths of the segments A, B, and C, D are equal. However, observe that because the coordinates of A, B, C, and D are indicated, then we could figure out the lengths of these segments using the distance formula. Oh, I see. So if you, if you, if right. you, if you get their length, basically, you're, you're hitting two birds with literally one stone because you're getting both cosine A minus B and sine A minus B. Well, let, let's see what, what's going to happen, but we're really hoping we'd be able to say something about at least one of them. So cosine A minus B and sine A minus B, let's see. Okay, so from A, B, the difference of the X coordinates, cosine A minus cosine B squared. Then sine of A minus sine of B quantity squared. So actually, ganito, um, A, B squared equals C, D squared. Because when I write down uh, both sides, there's going to be the squared symbol. But, well, you, you know, you can square both sides. So let's just do away with having to write down the squared symbol. CD is going to be cosine of A minus B minus 1. And then that's squared plus the square of sine of A minus B minus 0. Now, let's square away. Cosine squared A no. minus 2 cosine A cosine B plus, plus cosine squared B. 
plus sine squared a minus 2 sine of a sine b plus sine squared of b. Right side, cosine squared of a minus b minus 2 cosine of a minus b plus 1. And then the last thing to be squared is the difference of sine a minus b and 0. That's just sine squared of a minus b. Now, I wrote down some terms in the same column because of the fundamental Pythagorean identity. It doesn't matter what the number inside them are. It doesn't matter what the angle are. They're the same. Cosine squared plus sine squared of a. So this is 1. This is equal to 1. This is also equal to 1. Leaving us with the following on the left side. The purple ones, two. And then from the middle terms, you can factor out negative two. Cosine A, cosine B, plus sine of A, sine of B. On the other side, the right side, you have the purple one and the blue one, two. Minus two times the cosine of A minus B. Unfortunately, there is no trace, there is no evidence of sine of A minus B, but that's not so bad because we get to write something down for the cosine of A minus B. I know you can see through the algebra, we now get our first formula. The cosine of the difference A minus B is cosine A, cosine B, plus sine of A, sine of B. Where did, the All right. sign, where did the sign A minus B go? <gasps> well, uh, the, the, the purple encircled group, sine squared of A minus B. It got added to cosine squared of A minus B. Huh. Ah, I have an idea. You put, the, it's you, okay. put them, you put them in another quadrant. So instead of the sine A minus B getting the zero, the cosine A minus B gets the zero this time. You, you know what? You could try that. You, you could try that. Pero kasi, um, issue is, um, like for example, um, if you're gonna put, let's say, so I, I don't know where you, you're, you're gonna put point B, like maybe here, B put it at zero, one, and then, so then put C here, so this angle is A minus B, but remember, um, in standard position, this angle in purple is really going to be pi over 2 plus A minus B. So the coordinates of C would be cosine of pi over 2 plus A minus B, comma, sine ah! of pi over 2. So, so hindi pa rin talaga basta a minus b simply. Okay? But actually, that's a good idea. That's a good idea. I'm not going to shoot it down uh, because actually, uh, it's actually nice for you to have thought of that because we want sine of a minus b to remain. And nangyari kasi, unfortunately, sine of a minus b was subtracted from zero. But actually, you, you know what? It's okay that um, sine of A minus B disappeared. Kasi diba, if you are solving a system of equations, sure. uh, an equation in terms of X and Y, and an equation in terms of X and Y, a good situation is for one of the variables to disappear so that you would end up with an equation involving only X which would pave the way for you to solve for x. Because if one of the variables, say y, isn't going to disappear, then you wouldn't be able to solve for x completely. So in a certain sense, this is rather fortuitous. We were only left with cosine a minus b, and that's why we were able to solve it right away. Okay, let me wrap this 
up though for uh for, for uh formula A, but what if? Ah, the idea po ko, instead of doing that, use the co-function, use the co-functions, and then convert. Use the co-functions. All right. Convert, but convert the cosine into sine. Are you thinking of this? The okay. sine of pi over 2 minus x equals the cosine of x. Yes, you are correct. Eventually, that's what we are going to do. Okay? But I want to build everything up because now the, I, the, not, not the thing that we have to resolve would be the following. How do we prove these? Bro. All right. So, yes, but, but you're right. To make a conclusion about sine of a plus or minus b, so it's like we're, we're using Lego building blocks. All right, we're making sure the foundation is firm. So we're we are going to use things that we have already established. All right. No, so when, anyway, when you, have, when you have an amazing breakthrough, but then philosophy, philosophy stops you. Oh, but uh, philosophy is going to stop you only to show you. Uh, the, the relay of the land. But, but inspiration comes from places like that. I mean, because you got to start somewhere. You got to start somewhere. And then you, you don't always come up with the whole complete solution. So, but it's a way to start because you got to start somewhere. So, let me just um, get, get rid of, because uh, what if, say so Certainly speaking, this is what we have done. We have proved formula A when A is greater than B. What if it is B which is greater than A? Because what is it? A minus B is not A plus B. It's not commutative. Oh, so... Well, I mean, you have the difference, but, but actually here, uh, in formula A, it doesn't matter whether A is greater than B or A is equal to B or A is less than B. We want to show that A, formula A is correct, no matter which of A or B is greater. However, in our proof, we assumed A is greater than B. So all we've done is prove formula A only when A is greater than B. But now, it remains to be shown, what if B is greater than A? Well, then, in this case, observe that um, cosine of A minus B. Okay, So we're going to use the following property. Cosine of negative X equals the cosine of X for all real numbers x. So it doesn't matter whether x is positive or negative. So now, as you look at the cosine of a minus b, then this will be the same as the cosine of b minus a. And on cosine b minus a, where b is larger than a, then the argument presented above applies to the cosine of b minus a because B is greater than A. And according to the argument above, this is equal to the cosine of B, cosine of A, plus sine of B, sine of A, which is still the same expression. Okay, so therefore cosine of A minus B is still equal to the cosine of A, cosine of B, plus the sine of A, sine of of B. And then literally, if A literally outsmart literally outsmarted, bro. Oh, oh, because I, 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 I really thought for you would do yung ano talaga yung gagawin the bullet all over and then I really no 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 <laughs> no 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 all right and then what about when A is equal to B? The left hand side will be the cosine of zero, which is what's the cosine of zero? Cosine of zero, one. Yeah. One. And the right-hand side will be cosine A, cosine B, that will be cosine squared of A. 
sine A times sine of B would be sine squared of B because A and B are the same, but that's one for the Pythagorean identity. So, all right, the right-hand side is still equal to the left-hand side. Thus, we have proved formula A. Goal one accomplished. 69. Right. Oh. <laughs> hey, don't worry. B, you know what? B is not going to take uh, too much effort. For formula B, we're not going to draw anything. Okay, so. What about B? So formula A is the cosine subtraction formula. Now let's justify the cosine addition formula. But all we got to do is, uh, in mathematics, if you could try to write something in terms of what you already know how to handle. Here, we're trying to handle the cosine of a sum. What we have established is how to deal with the cosine of a difference. But you know what? In as much as a difference can be written as a sum, a but a sum, therefore, a minus, what's that? Negative me. Oh. Yeah. The cosine of a difference, use formula A on this. Cosine A, cosine negative B. And then, uh, remember, this is, this is minus. So from formula A plus sine of A times the sine of negative B. And then let's remind ourselves, um, what, how else can we rewrite cosine of negative B? Cosine B. As a cosine of B. And what about sine of negative B? Negative sine B. Negative sine of B. And that leads to the following. Cosine A, cosine B. Plus, minus. So minus sine of A, sine of B as our alternative expression for the cosine of A plus B. And this is formula B. We're done. Bruh. All right. OK. Of course, right now we're proving, but definitely we're going to use all these for uh, lots of uh, fun computations. Uh, you were talking about co-functions earlier. Theorem. The cosine of i over 2 minus x equals, you, you said it, what is this? Sine x. Sine of x. Uh, sine of i over 2 minus x equals cosine of x. So because of these identities, we say that uh, sine and cosine are co-functions because cosine of pi over two minus x equals the the equals w w when you take the partner co-function evaluated at x tangent of pi over two minus x is equal to the secant of x. And in fact, the secant of pi over 2 minus x is equal to the tangent of x. The tangent and secant are co-functions. So we have these other co-function pair, tan and sec. Another co-function pair the other two trigonometric functions, uh, cotangent of pi over 2 minus x equals uh, cosecant of, hold on, is this correct? Oh, wait, 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 wait. I think that hold should on, be on. tangent. That should be tangent. Because it's cotangent. Play. And then, uh, anyway. Well, in, in my in my opinion, but I think 
cotangent is, is co co function with tangent because it sounds like it. And then cosine gets literally. Uh, All right. Let, let's um let, let, let's prove uh let, let's prove um I, I remember it's tangent and wait 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 hold on hold on hold on okay get it up. Kasi weird po kung ganun eh. Why did they call it second and co-second? And tangent and co-tangent? When, when in the end, tangent is literally co-function co with, with second. And there's no reason. Alright, so again. But, but that definitely, let, let, let's uh, go, go, go back to that. For, for now, um, ganito. Okay. These uh, can be proved when x is between 0 and pi over 2. When x is between 0 degrees and 90 degrees, because in a right triangle, because x is acute, then you could put x here. And so the other angle will be the complement pi over 2 minus x. And here you can see that uh, if you label the vertices as A, B, or C, if you look at the cosine of pi over 2 minus x, it would be what's adjacent to pi over 2 minus x, AC, over the hypotenuse AB. But AC is opposite vertex B, where you have angle x. So this is sine of x. And similarly, sine of pi over 2 minus x, opposite the pi over 2 minus x angle is BC over the hypotenuse AB. But BC is adjacent to the angle x. So BC over AB is a cosine of x. So if x is acute, then those two equations are true. However, what we want to establish is the fact that these are true even if x is one of your weird angles. x is 120 degrees. x is negative 75 degrees. So it doesn't matter whether x is uh, positive or negative angles, swept clockwise or counterclockwise. Uh, these two equations, they are... Uh, still going to be true. All right. Um, so for the, the let's call this um, A, B, C, D, E, and F. So far, we're done with A and B. Huh? So okay, na tayo sa A and B. When, uh, ano po, when the original goal was to prove A, B, C, D, but then now it's oh. expanded to E, F. And uh, five minutes from now, po, now we need to prove T, L, F, Z. No, we didn't, man. We're done with A and B. Yes. Okay. Well, um, formula E isn't so bad because, hey, you're taking the cosine of a difference. So I could actually just use one of our formulas above. Cosine of pi over 2 minus x is cosine of pi over 2, cosine of x, plus or minus. It's so it's minus plus, so it will be plus. Plus sine of pi over 2 times sine of x. And the trig functions of pi over 2 have known values. They are respectively 0 and 1. So the only thing that's left is the second term, 1 times sine of x. So just like that, we have established formula E. Ah, literally in seconds. Oh, just one line. Now, what about formula F? Now, we cannot use yet formula, formula C. Okay, because we haven't used yet formula C. In fact, to prove formula C, we are going to use formula F. Okay, so 
So maging malabo yun kasi di ba, you're going to prove formula F using formula C and you're going to prove formula C using formula F. What if they're actually both wrong? Di ba? You prove one using the other. So that would be a circular I, argument. At least, I, at least my intuition is right that I, and, and I, I realize that the only way, if there's no other way to manipulate the geometry, just use co yung mga ano po, co functions. Uh, so, so ayan, but, but that's the way to go. We're going to use co-functions. Now, the two sides of F, there, there's sine and cosine. We haven't proved yet the identities involving sine. So we're going to start with the right-hand side, cosine of X. So how exactly are we going to do things? Um, let's write this as cosine of negative x. Okay, why? Because I'm gonna insert pi over two. <gasps> pi over two minus x minus pi over two. Oh, okay. I was, I was shocked for a moment. All right. Okay. Now, uh, perfection at its pinnacle. Literally, okay, so, so, over and over. So, what was that? Sorry? Yeah, in the book, using, using just one theorem base, basically just one theorem all over and over. Oh, diba? Over the... and over and over. Okay, like one ring to rule them all if you watch The Lord of okay. the Rings. All right. Cosine pi over 2 minus x. Cosine pi over 2. And then this minus, and then we would go sine, so it's going to be plus sine of uh, pi over 2 minus x, and then sine of pi over 2. Cosine pi over 2 is 0, sine pi over 2 is 1. So the only thing surviving is sine of pi over 2 minus x, which is formula F. Literally, 1984. I don't, I don't, I don't get it. What, what do you mean, 1984? Are you talking about the novel? George <laughs> Orwell's 1984. What, what do you mean, 1984? I don't get it. <laughs> Sorry. No, I don't know what it is. George Orwell's 1984. Yeah, is that what you meant, George Orwell? Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> All right. Uh, okay. Have it. So E and F. So see how um, it doesn't matter whether X is positive or a negative. These two identities, they are universal. You could use them, whatever X is, even if X is not acute, even if there is no right triangle that can be drawn. All right, now we are ready to prove C and D. So actually, uh, once you have C, the, the other, D, you, you could um, conclude it from C because if you're able to prove uh, the formula for the sign of a difference, so now if you have the sign of A plus B, then just rewrite that sum as a difference. Okay, so we are going to prove, let's start with the sine of A plus B. Let's use um, one of these two formulas for E and F. Well, um, sine of something, sine of X, can, using formula E, a sine can be written as a cosine. Yeah, oh, let's I use see. formula so E. You will, you, if you will change variable from X to A plus B, then you, yes. can, you, can, make, you, can, you can use the, co, the co-function to turn the sine into a more familiar cosine. Mm -hmm. Cosine, because we have already established our identities for cosine. And then, 
um, we ultimately want A and B to be separated from each other. So we're going to write the party inside as pi over 2 minus A minus B. So at least, I mean, pi over 2, we would have to deal with that. But first things first, we need to separate A and B from each other. And so now we have. So first entity, pi over 2 minus A, and then minus B. We already have the cosine subtraction formula at our disposal. Cosine of pi over 2 minus A, and then cosine of B, plus sine of pi over 2 minus A, sine of B. So this is how we are expanding this cosine of a difference. So now B is separated from pi over 2 minus A. But fortunately, we already know how to simplify. We write much more conveniently those strict functions of pi over 2 minus A. The former is the sine of A, the latter, the cosine of, uh, the cosine of A rather. I wrote down the cosine. So as expected, sine of A, cosine of B, plus sine of B, cosine of A. This is our sine addition formula. Yay. No. Finally, sine of A minus B, sine of A plus negative B. Literally just okay. get one formula to prove six formulas. Yes, Diva. Right. Diva, isn't that so fun? So we only have to draw the unit circle just once, from which everything follows. So from uh, the line just above sine of A plus negative B, we're going to write this as sine of A cosine of negative B plus sine of negative B cosine of A. And then the trig functions of negative B can be replaced by trig functions involving just B. Cosine of B, negative sine of B. And we are going to wrap this up now. Sine of A cosine of B minus sine of B cosine of A. All right. So it's not so much that I would ask you to remember this. I think I only got to remember everything after I thought. And in fact, when I started a couple of minutes before starting this session, I looked at my notes to just to remind me which, uh, which of the formulas would have to be proved first on which to build up the proof for the rest of the other formulas. So you know, it's really not something that, that I would really try to memorize, but I, I just reminded myself, oh, for A minus B, it, it's this uh, circle argument, the, 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 the argument that we present here using the distance formula. All right. Uh, the mga tangents and the other uh, trig functions, let's go back to them. The, we're not going to run out of things to prove, but first, uh, let's take a break from proving. Oh, no. What? what? Oh, no. Find <laughs> sine of pi over 12, pi over 12 and cosine of pi over 12. Pi over 6 is 30 degrees, which means pi over 12 is 15 degrees. So this is a question about the trigonometric functions of 15 degrees. We don't have, have to write down for a tangent. This is so okay, funny. how so? Because it just so happens that in, in case I use the difference, the sign difference formula, Mm -hmm. A and B are A, A and A, uh, A minus B is literally equal to B. Okay. Ah. All right. Uh, yeah. th there's that. Or maybe even though this is 15 degrees, 
let's recall our special angles. Special angles. There are three special angles. Can you think of how to write 15 degrees in terms of the other uh, special angles, uh, in terms of sums and differences of the other special angles? Oh, uh, only sums and differences. Ah, uh, 45 is technically a special angle, so 60 minus 45. Yeah, yeah 60 minus 45, but then 45 minus 30 degrees. So actually, you have two choices, uh, 60 degrees minus 45 degrees. So observe that pi over 12 is equal to, to 60 degrees pi over 3 minus pi over 4. So therefore, sine of pi over 12 is the sine of pi over 3 minus pi over 4. So we have sine of pi over 3 cosine pi over 4. And then this is sine. So we're going to copy the operation subtraction. So this time sine of pi over 4 cosine of pi over 2. Uh, for pi over 4 sine and cosine is the same. Square root of 2 over 2. For 60 degrees, its cosine is 1 half. Its sine is square root of 3 over 2. So we have a denominator of 4, square root of 6, minus the square root of 2. And this is exact. Yeah, oh, because... Um, I mean, if you want to factor out square root of two, but from and write it as square root of two times square root of three minus one, but I don't see that as fulfilling any other like uh, benefit. So I dare say square root of six minus square root of two is all right. And then here we just need to use the fact that uh, pi over twelve is pi over three minus pi over four. So this is um, cosine pi over 3, cosine pi over 4. The operation inside is subtraction, but this is cosine, so we're going to flip things. Plus sine pi over 3, sine pi over 4. For pi over 4, the sine and cosine are the same. Cosine pi over 3 is 1 half sine square root of 3 over 2. So we have square root of 2 plus the square root of 6 divided by 4. Hmm. Interesting. They are technically conjugates. Yeah. Oh. Um. And cosine of, how about 7 pi over 12? Huh, 7 pi over 12. 8 pi over 12. Ah, no, no. Uh, eight, yeah, 8 pi over 12. That is brain fart. Oh, pi, that's pi over 3 minus pi over 12, which we now know to be this one. What's pi over 3? Pi over 3 is... Ah, all right. 60. 60 minus that one. So whatever 60 is. Uh, sine of 60. So what? wait, how are you thinking of rewriting 7 pi over 12? Uh, cosine, con, con cosine, plus cosine. Basically, it's just cosine pi over 3, which is 8 pi over 12. Minus pi over 12. Ah, all right. So pi over three minus pi over twelve. Yeah, that that works. Um, wait, hold on. Time about did I do it? About. Wait, pi over three is four pi over twelve minus pi over twelve. Oh, okay. So two pi over three. All right, all right. So two pi over three so eight all right eight okay all right yeah we we, we, we could do that um 
literally algebra. Mm -hmm. So cosine 2 pi over 3, cosine pi over 12, cosine of 2 pi over 3, sine of pi over 12, besides you already uh, determined cosine and sine of pi over 12 as respectively square root of 2 plus square root of 6 over 4 and square root of 6 minus square root of 2 over 4 from our computations above. Now, Joshua, point out to me what are these cosine of 2 pi over 3 and sine of 2 pi over 3? Cosine of 120 and sine of 120. What's cosine 120 and sine of 120? Mm -hmm. I forgot. Uh, the reference angle? Oh, the reference angle is 60. I also forgot 60. Mm -hmm. uh, one half three, is <laughs> one half three over two. Uh, wait a minute. Cosine. Yeah. Yeah. Cosine. Cosine is adjacent. Adjacent uh, with sixty. Adjacent. Adj adjacent over. Oh, one half. So one half, and then uh, the sine will be square root of three over two. Ah. These are the trigonometric functions of sixty degrees. What about the trigonometric functions of 120 degrees, which is in the second quadrant. So co cosine would be negative, but then the mm -hmm. sine would be so it'll still be positive because the sine is in the All right. So okay. So that's correct. So uh, do, do, do not forget that. So the denominator is going to be 8. Okay. Minus square root of 2, minus square root of 6 plus square root of nine square root of 18 which is nine times two so three square root of two minus the square root of six mm. two square root of two minus uh two square root of six over eight square root of two minus square root of six over four yeah, he's also conjugate of pi over 12. Oh, uh, I don't know that they're related to each other, or alternatively, all right, um, uh, cosine seven pi over twelve. So ultimately, it depends on what you see first. Because uh, this is, um, you, you, you look at this as uh, 2 pi over 3 minus pi over 12. You could also have considered pi over 2 plus pi over 12. So 90 degrees plus, uh, so starting from 90 degrees. So for perhaps because uh, the trig functions of pi over two might be easier to remember than the trig functions of two pi over three. But also one other option, again, that there are a lot, this is pi over three plus pi over four. Four plus three is seven and then three times four is 12. So this is cosine pi over three, cosine pi over four, minus sine pi over three, sine pi over four. The pi over fours we know, square root of two over two. And then cosine pi over three is one half. And then sine of pi over three is square root of three over two. And that's what is gonna lead to the following, a divisor of four square root of two minus the square root of six. Epic. All right. Okay. Um, hold on. Actually, you're right. The, the, the co-function of... Okay. 
the tangent of pi over 2 minus x should be the cotangent of x. All right, and the cotangent of pi over 2 minus x is equal to the tangent of x. All right, uh, that's because, well, The tangent is sine over cosine. So we have sine of pi over two minus x over the cosine of pi over two minus x. But the numerator, the sine of pi over two minus x is cosine of x. The denominator, cosine of pi over two minus x is sine of x. And so this is the cotangent of x. Uh, and then for, for the others, you could uh, write them up, but uh, they're going to be based on a very similar identity. Uh, two more formulas, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H. I told you why it will reach Z sometime. <laughs> no, we're not going to make it reach Z. And when we get to Y, we're going to skip Y and go to Alpha. Just so we don't <laughs> get it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, um, tangent of A plus B. And tangent of A minus B. Both of these are gonna have fractions. And then in the numerator, they are tangent of A plus tangent of B. And for the second, tangent of A minus the tangent of B they are at least in the numerator consistent with the operation inside the tangent. The respective denominators are one minus tangent A tangent B. So one minus the product of the tangents. The second denominator is one plus tangent of A tangent of B. So there is a shifting. Uh, let's justify formula G. Uh, we, we just take note of the fact that this is sine of a plus b divided by the cosine of a plus b. So, you know, we already have a way of separating the sine and cosine of the sum of two numbers. And then we want to do something similar for uh, the tangent of the sum of two numbers. So let's use what we can replace these sine and cosine expressions with. Sine of a... Uh, cosine of b plus sine of b cosine of a and down here uh, cosine of a cosine of b minus sine of a sine of b notice how uh the signs in the numerator and denominator are respectively plus and minus which if you look at formula g's right hand side it follows the operations plus and minus. All right, now the rest of the solution involves, well, because our goal is in the numerator, well, actually in the denominator, before the subtraction symbol, we have one here, where currently we have cosine A times cosine B. Well, to turn that into a one, let's divide both the numerator and denominator by the cosine of A, cosine of B. Because that's the way to turn the denominator's first term into one. Suspicious. Uh, one minus, you're going to have sine of A times sine of B divided by cosine A cosine B. And in the numerator, sine of a cosine b that's from the first term divided by cosine a cosine b plus the second term in the numerator let's uh let, let me write first cosine of a and eh, that doesn't matter All right sine of b times cosine of a divided by the cosine of a 
cosine of b. We definitely see some of these expressions turning into just one. This is one, and this is also one. And the rest are ratios of sine and cosine. So that's how we end up with tangent of A plus tangent of B over one minus tangent of A times the tangent of B. Yes, one done. And All then right. One is done. You can get the you can get sort of its conjugate na for mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. So I'm not gonna write it down anymore. The proof of H is similar. All right, example. We're given the following facts. Alpha is an angle in the third quadrant and beta is an angle in the second quadrant. Now the tangent of alpha is four thirds and the cosine of beta is negative 12 over 13. Find the following. Find the tangent of alpha minus beta, the cosine of alpha minus beta, and the quadrant of alpha minus beta. Okay, so it's easy to find the quadrant of the alpha minus beta because we have two, two different functions. And if tangent is positive, it means they have the same sign. It means it could either be in... It could... Uh, wait, no. It can only be in... Pada. It can only be in... Uh, left and... Uh, second and fourth. There are only two. Tangent can go. And then the cosine... Wait, tangent of alpha is positive. Positive. Ah, but So, negative pala po. Negative ba po gano? Yeah. Actually, uh, Joshua, it's already provided for. Alpha is in the third quadrant. It's already given. Ah, it's <laughs> it does. All right, I, I don't know. All right, so at least it's consistent now that tangent alpha is positive. But but the thing about alpha minus beta is that uh, ultimately it depends on how big they are it on alpha minus beta because um we cannot even assume that alpha is that alpha and beta are from zero up to two pi but then to generate alpha you might have to go four revolutions depending get on that was beta to get to the second quadrant you might have to go clockwise instead of counterclockwise so um May not be easy to to guess the quadrant of alpha minus beta. Bro, harder. Yeah, but um, how about we start with baby steps? Cosine of alpha minus beta and tangent of alpha minus beta. Where do you want to start? Cosine or tangent? Cosine looks simpler, but I I I don't trust anything anymore. <laughs> Why don't you trust anything anymore? Yeah, you're, you're too young. It's a problem. I'm going to put the. I'm traumatized now. He was rejoicing this approving identities na yung sign and cosine. Yung pala yun yung mas ano mas. Kala na thinking kaysa do sa mga iba. No, di ba? Di ba? Ayun. So. I yeah, know, because if all I'm going to ask you is sub a quadratic equation, it's not that exciting, Joshua. You're going to get bored. I think is it safe to say are 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 you bored, Joshua? <laughs> no, I I would hope far from it. All right, far from it. Get it up. So strategize tayo. Cosine of alpha minus beta. Um, we need kailangan natin cosine alpha cosine beta sine alpha sine beta. But of those four, the sines and cosines of alpha and beta. Well, we already have cosine beta, so can you try? So can can you see how we where we could get? Hmm. 
sorry, I, I, I muted myself, or is it me who muted her? So, um, cosine of alpha minus beta. So we need cosine alpha, sine cosine alpha. alpha is, 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 is this deep inside tangent alpha? Right, you could. Okay. So describe to me, Joshua, how would you find the trick functions of alpha? I mean, we have tangent alpha, but, but I mean the sine and cosine of alpha. How would you do it? Uh, sine alpha over cosine alpha is four thirds. Uh, hmm. Make make uh, uh ah the, the the quadrants are given, so I can technically use cofunctions. Yes. 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 So I will. I will so just convert the. I will just convert the sine into cosine because for this problem cosine is apparently needed more so mm -hmm. sine 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 alpha will become cosine cosine pi over 2 uh my cosine pi over 2 minus a quantity everything so the that can be expanded into what's cosine cosine is the same so cosine Cosine pi over two cosine alpha yes plus sine oh I still need the, the sine anyway oh. sine pi over two sine alpha oh yeah I got it anyway so the Pythagorean identities. What's the next one? The second bullet point. One 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 plus one plus tangent squared theta is equal to second squared theta. So in particular, what was tangent squared alpha? No 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 no. That no. that's my hint, Joshua. What what what? what? Uh, if you square tangent alpha, and you, it means you can also square the, the right hand side actually, so it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. So sixteen over nine is equal to ah uh, no sixteen over nine plus one. What sixteen over mm -hmm. nine plus one? Nine sixteen twenty five over nine mm -hmm. uh, is equal to second squared alpha. So if I if I unsquare it, I square root it, that will become five over three. And then since that second, I have to flip it over to get cosine. And from cosine, I can just get 3 over 5. Not and quite. Five. Not quite. Common not error quite. when you take square roots. Ah, plus minus. Mm -hmm. uh, so which one? Oh, the alpha is given. So if if the cosine alpha is in quadrant three, then it's supposed to be negative. Mm, so so twenty five over nine, unsquared rooted plus minus five over three. Yes. Oh, ah yes, plus minus five over three. So I might use the minus five over three, and then this uh, reciprocal it, it will become a negative three over five. There yes. you go. Negative 3 over 5. It's going to make a lot of difference if you use positive 3 over 5. So from negative 3 out of over 5, I can finally get the cosine alpha minus beta. But then sure. but then to get to get the tangent alpha minus beta before even doing it, I need to get the sine the sine of uh, the sine of uh, yeah, the sine of alpha and beta both. Which can be done by using cofunctions. So I can see the entire roadmap for this. It's possible to find both cosine and cosine alpha minus beta and tan tangent alpha minus beta just by using this uh, this cosine alpha. Okay, so all right, all right. Cosine alpha minus beta is equal to cosine alpha cosine. Beta. It's a little uh before we we get lost. All right, sorry. So you you were able to explain. Oh, wait, hold on. Sorry. Um, cosine alpha is 
I mean, sorry, not so much before you get lost, but, but before we proceed further, all right? So cosine alpha is negative three over five. How would you propose we get sine of alpha? Co-functions. I mean, the, 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 the quadrant is given, so there's not much of a mystery. No, I mean, okay, what, what is sine of alpha? Sine of alpha is uh, cosine pi minus over two. Oh, I can just use the I can use the I can use the Pythagorean identities all over again. Ah. Yeah. Or. or tangent alpha. Tangent four alpha. Thirds. Use the use the sine alpha over cosine alpha in equals. Yeah. Mm. Whenever I come up with a genius and the idea, but there's always a more genius idea. <laughs> yeah, it's it comes to the experience. So see, the, here's the thing with all these trigonometric functions, identities. There's so many of them. There's so many of them. So, so it's all right. It's just so that's why I'm asking you. Para pa ulit ulit tayo. All right. So sine alpha is four thirds times negative three fifths or negative four over five and then check that hey that's consistent with alpha being in the third quadrant yes yeah, sine is negative all right so so we have cosine alpha and sine of alpha how about beta we um well how do we get sine of beta the, 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 the Pythagorean, uh, Pythagorean, uh, identity, identity. So tell me, what is sine of beta? Have you worked it out? Sine. Or we can just uh, write it down here. One minus cosine squared beta. First one time. minus this is getting one a... four four. Twenty five over sixty nine. Positive. Positive or negative? On the sine beta itself. Oh, uh, beta is in quadrant. Um, nah, nah. Uh, it's still, uh, it's still positive. Po. All right. So I want you to be conscious of decisions like that. All right. Five, so beta is in quadrant two. So sine beta is positive. So therefore, sine of beta is five over thirteen. And so, actually, since you have the sine and cosine of alpha and beta, you could also figure out tangent of beta, which along with tangent alpha will help you figure out the tangent of alpha minus beta. But let's do it one at a time, cosine of alpha minus beta. Cosine alpha minus beta equals cosine alpha cosine beta plus sine alpha cosine sine alpha sine beta. All right. And these are, we have um, negative three fifths. Sine alpha is negative four fifths. Sine beta is five over 13. Cosine beta was given earlier, negative 12 over 13. The denominator is 65. Negative three times negative 12 is 36 minus 20. So this is 16 over 65. Hmm, now, um, we, we know that tangent, what was the given tangent? Uh, tangent alpha is 4 thirds. Tangent beta is sine beta over cosine beta, 5 over 13. Cosine beta negative 12 over 13. So it's negative 5 over 12. And so we can go ahead. Tangent alpha minus beta. Tan alpha minus tan beta. 1 plus tangent alpha tangent beta. 4 thirds minus negative 5 over 12. 1 plus 4 thirds, negative 5 over 12. 
I'm going to multiply by 36. Well, actually, the LCD is, yeah, 36. Uh, 48 plus 15 over 36 minus 20. We have 4, 5, 63 over, if I did this right, 63 over 16. Now tell me, what is the quadrant of alpha minus beta? The only remaining, the only remaining question may as well be the hardest question or the easiest. Hmm. The tangent of this angle is positive. Mm -hmm. Therefore, uh, yeah, so therefore it's either in second or fourth. While the cos again, careful, careful. You, you always put you know, this. Tangent. Okay, so I, I, I must remember now the positive is actually one, one and third. Mm. Okay, so first and third is uh, tangent. Could either be in third, but then cosine is positive, so therefore it's in first. I uh, know that's wrong, that's a sign, but uh, so it must be in first or fourth. So it meets at one, so therefore the quadrant is one. Yeah, there you go. We are in the first quadrant. Bro, all this time it is in the first quadrant. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> but, but at least we're sure. I mean, if we're going to guess, there's a 25% chance of getting it right. All right, but we're, uh, we, we have a way here. All right, what we have here is an expression half of cosine of t plus square root of three over two multiplied by sine of t. So the task is write it in the form sine of t plus c, where c is some real number. So I suppose it's a question of um, one half cosine t plus square root of three over two sine of t um, this is equal to sine of t plus. Why do one. I see in Why do I see in most textbooks? I know in most handwriting, not textbooks, that the t is lit, written like a ribbon, and there's a there's a stick driven through it. Are you talking about this? Yes, bro. Why Why does it have like two tails? That that, that, that that's cursive. Oh, okay, it's cursive. Q. R S T. Uh, All right. So, for example, when, when you write it, it's uh, written continuously. Fatal, fatality. Okay. I R L. Hmm. All right. Okay. Uh, what would be the advantage of being able to write that? sum of two terms into a single trigonometric expression um, because for example if you are working with this function f of t and then if you want to analyze its properties you want to graph it um it can be done you could graph it by software but let's say you want to do things exactly you want to do things by hand it's difficult to do it because you have first term and second term However, if you're able to write it as a single term, then it will make the analysis much easier. So try to uh, add those two terms into a single expression. What? This is, uh, this is the most worrisome. Uh... It's, it's not standard, perhaps. Um, get it on. Notice anything about one half and square root of three over two? 
one half n squared of three over two are literally the coordinates of sixty degrees. Yeah. In particular, one half is the cosine, and then sine is the sine, literally. But uh, can you think of one half as the sign of some number? Oh, so it's the sign of 30, which is the complementary. 5 over 6. And the square root of 3 over 2 is the cosine of? Oh, I'm going to go back. I thought it was sine of all. Okay, anyway. Cosine of uh, the 60. I know, so cosine of 30. So this is now equal to sine of t, that's the cosine of pi over 6, plus the cosine of t multiplied by the sine of pi over 6. Can you now see a way of writing down this sum of two terms into a single sine expression? Oh, so the, 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 the sum of sines has the same sign, so it doesn't matter anyway. So... Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, so t, t plus, wait, 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 I'm getting bamboozled. The, the sign is also not in the same. Ah, it's really like that. So sine t plus 1 pi over 6. Yeah, that's it. Sine of t plus pi over 6. We happen to have the good fortune of... Alam ko na po sinabi po ang c is an element of the real number system. Alam ko na po is an element. So I'm just trying to figure out. Uh, we can write this as sine of t plus something, but as what? Well, what can we add to t so that when we look at the sine of t plus pi, so sine of t plus c, it's going to be equal to the given expression. Okay, I, I, I'd like to point out that you were, in fact, correct earlier when you pointed out that um, one half, okay, it's sine of pi over six, well, that's also cosine of pi over 3. And square root of 3 halves, this is equal to sine of pi over 3. So you can write this as cosine of t, cosine of pi over 3, plus sine of t, that's a sine of pi over 3. So you can also still rewrite this, but based on what we have actually written down, what this suggests is writing this down as what? As how? Cosine. Cosine t plus t. Uh, no, cosine t minus pi over 3. Yeah. So it's actually also equal to the cosine of t minus pi over 3. Okay, so yeah, cosine of t minus pi over 3 is equal to, in fact, the sine of t plus pi over 6. I mean, did they look different, but are they equal? How? I mean, okay, they're both equal to half of cosine t plus square root of 3 over 2 sine of t. But more directly, it's because uh, cosine of t minus pi over 3, this is cosine of pi over 3. I say Oh, yeah, that negative, but, but you were thinking of putting in sine. So, sorry, okay. pi over 2, but then we're, we're going to have to use the sine function. Yeah. Pi over 2 minus pi over 3 minus t. Call function. Uh, so, that's how we end up with sine of pi over 6 plus t. So, now, pareho na. Yay. All right. Um, Like hard problem. No, no, no. Um, actually, not a hard problem, but. Wait, 
naman. An- another <laughs> other identity. Sana po alam ko na po parang parang na na other identities this time. Um let, let's start with the, the fact that a cosine of let me write it as cosine of x plus y equals cosine of x cosine of y minus sine of x sine of y and now if um if x and y are the same then we get the following cosine of 2x is equal to cosine x times cosine x so cosine squared of x minus sine of x times sine of x so minus sine squared of x so this is a useful identity because it allows us to replace the cosine of an angle double an angle or double a number directly in terms of trigonometric functions of just uh x the, the simpler looking number now um cosine of 2x so for, from the get-go can be rewritten as cosine squared of x minus sine squared of x but i'd like to point out that when it comes to cosine of 2x we have alternative ways of re rewriting this because observe that um this is equal to cosine squared of x minus now sine squared of x what we're subtracting can be written as from the pythagorean identity the first one one minus cosine squared of x and so we can simplify that as follows the the, the green expression two cosine squared x minus one Para ang dami nilang formulas, no? So, over time, pag paulit-ulit na gagamitin, matatandaan din. Another is that you could write this. So, what happened was I replaced sine squared of x. But we could also have replaced cosine squared of x. 1 minus sine squared of x. And then minus sine squared of x. So, here is the third formula for the cosine of 2x, 1 minus 2 times sine squared of x. Yeah, oh, so again, label natin. Okay, the, uh, theorem. And then, in fact, there's one more. Well, because, hey, we were able to do it for cosine x plus y, why don't we do it for sine? So this is sine of x cosine of y plus sine of y cosine of x. So if x is equal to y, then sine of 2x equals sine x cosine x. And then the second term would be sine of x cosine x did the same thing. Huh. Uh-oh. So next meeting when we get to use this, so babalikan natin. Um, example. Let's prove the following. 1 plus sine of 2x plus cosine 2x over 1 plus sine of 2x no, no, minus the cosine no, no, of no. 2x. I disrecognizable. This looks familiar, eh? Okay. But um, here's the thing. The, the left side is definitely much more complex. But I feel like the right side is so simple. And, and furthermore, if you compare, on the left side, it's strict functions of 2x. And on the right side, a strict function of just x. So what this suggests is that at some point, we have to make that transition 
from 2x down to x. So that means we are going to have to use these uh, double measure identities. Okay. Let's start with the left side. I can sense po baga, baga mamagot po ng half angle tapos ang mga etc. Oh, may mga half angle pa tayo. But actually, the, the thing with the half angle formulas, I can't really remember them that much. I, I just talk about them when I teach a class like this, just for familiarization, just to point out that, hey, such formulas do exist. But as far as recalling identities are concerned, I only go as far as these double measure identities and again ultimately if i need an identity a particular one and i don't have my book with me i try to figure out what it should be by by proving all right now sine of 2x the middle term we really have not much of a choice that's just two sine of x cosine of x however for a cosine of 2x, we have three options. Which of those do you think would be most helpful in rewriting the numerator of our identity? Formula one, two, or three? One. I don't know. Wait. Uh... So far, we have Probably one. That's it. Is it two yeah. one, eh? Yes, precisely. So uh, let me, uh, so that's going to help us to uh, cancel the, the, the one here, uh, uh, right at the start. So two cosine squared x minus one. Yes. And then in the denominator, one plus uh, sine of two x is two sine of x cosine of x and then minus which of the three formulas for cosine of 2x would be most helpful one two or three uh two again probably oh wait <clears throat> it's minus mm -hmm. i have a choice here uh i can yeah yeah, I can just use three because if I if the one will again be cancelled if I do. It. Yeah, one minus two sine squared of x. So knowing those options, being aware of them will help you will help a lot. So the only thing that's gonna remain in the numerator are this and this. Because one minus one will cancel. From the orange and circle terms, the common factor is two cosine of x. Sine of x plus cosine of x. In the denominator, one minus one is going to cancel, leaving us with two sine x cosine x minus minus, so plus two sine squared of x, where we have a common factor, two sine of x along with cosine of x plus the sine of x. The twos, sine x plus cosine x, we're left with cosine over sine, which is merely the cotangent of x. No. All right. So what it helps is being deliberate. We have three choices with cosine of 2x, if you replace cosine of 2x by any one of them, you would get a correct replacement, but some replacements, we will we can strategize. All right, so I'm gonna end. Yung moto ko po sa CNN eh, random eh. Nananalo po ako sa bogus. Kasi kasi ginagawa ko yung just writing random words eh. Tapos check ko. Random. Tapos gumagana. Alright. So, you know. May pupuntan. May mga pupuntan. But, alright. So, ayun. Eventually, it's fun. They just try different things. But sometimes if we're deliberate, we could, you know, come up with something much more efficient.
and also fun and nice. All right. So I hope you enjoyed today's class, Joshua and also Sir Jay. Right. Thank you. So, Thank you. All right. Bye. Bye, bye. Take care. Bye, bye Joshua. Nag enjoy ka, Joshua. Bye. All right. Actually, you know what? I always ask that. Nag enjoy ka ba? So I'm really happy. Bye. Bye bye. Bye. Okay.